Welcome to Lizard People. This is a show where we talk all about conspiracy theories, crazy people, and kooky ideas about what's going on behind the scenes. I'm your host, Caitlin Hempstead. Let's get to the show. Project. Yeah, please, please do. Okay, so okay. here with us today is an actor, Ew. a writer, <laughs> <laughs> a model. No, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> he could model, but he chooses uh, not to. She could um, too. You should see her right now. Come on, get out. They've seen me. Everyone who <laughs> listens to this podcast knows me. Personally. She should not be doing radio podcasts. Guys, I do not have a face for radio. You don't. One time, a stranger in Times Square told me I had a voice for radio. Ah, yeah, you do have a nice voice. I wasn't envisioning her. <laughs> I'm garbage. Uh, I told that story. You got to take a compliment where you can get it. <laughs> you got in this life. You've got yeah. to. What last name do you want to use for this? Oh, so my actual last name is Despirito. Oh, okay. Do Jamie Despirito. Mm-hmm. Very talented man. Aww. Yay. You too. Yeah, thanks. Um, and you're here today from the faraway mystical land of London. Uh. UK. Uh, sorry, I keep doing that. Is that a thing? Uh, it is. There's this really dumb comedy, which is actually pretty funny, uh, where the guy pronounces everything phonetically. <laughs> but I've just decided to implement it in my life and I have to stop doing it. Wait, is that the one where it's like Chipotle, Chipoodle? Oh, no. I, actually, that might be an American one. I this, think it this is. This is a British show, but he like... He'll like phone up this electrical store. Sorry, this is like tangent, but it's pretty funny. I love this. And he'll this. be like, so, okay, you can be the employee and I'll show you what he does. Oh, right. Some improv. So, I love yeah, it. Yeah. Just remember the names of the brands and what they sell in electrical stores. Obviously, look at me trying to give you a lesson. Okay, cool. <laughs> ring, ring. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I would like to get a duft player. Uh, is that, are you looking for a Sony DVD player? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, a duft player. <laughs> Uh, I need, I also need a tooth player. I, t- I, t- I don't even. A TV. A TV yeah. player. I think what confused me is no one calls it a TV player. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that you guessed so easily the first yeah, one. So I, was, I thought I'm going to throw you on this. Yeah, one. one more, one more. Rule of threes. What's the other one? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, I need a very good uh, picture. So I was looking for a look at the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that? A, a, a locket of TV? A look at the tub? <laughs> what is this? It's an LCD TV. Look at the tub. <laughs> He's wow. a genius. That's no? fun. I love it. Yeah. No. <laughs> and for the record, he's a really good looking Asian guy who it's pure, it's called Phone Jacker and he only does like voice stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you've got an affinity with him, you know, like he's not putting his hot face out there. Wow. Do you, you think know? I could marry him? You could. Okay. You could. Yeah. And you could have the ceremony, like just, <laughs> no, I'm going to. Through podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ryan, will you be my uh, marriage performer? Oh, wow. Performer. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Only an actress would say that. Oh. Not, will you officiate? Will you be my will you, will you wear a little costume? <laughs> like a suit. I'll be wearing my white dress costume. <laughs> yeah, I do want to have a wedding where there's lots of fun juggling and shit. Yeah? Yeah. Do you, you want to um, get married? Uh, so, <laughs> negative. Um, I, uh, I, uh... I'm quite jealous though, a friend of mine, the, it's actually the only wedding I've been to, it was, and it's not even a wedding, it was a civil partnership, um, but Gandalf, Ian McKellen read the vows, and he was wearing a long pink caftan, it was a gay wedding, 
Um, you went to a wedding where Ian McKellen officiated. He read the vows. Stop it. Yeah. Like, I'm a bit scared to sh- share too many stories because if you post this on my Facebook, it will shame some people. Uh, no, I uh, really, you don't have to share it, but also stories. I love the name dropping. This okay, is the yeah, best. I should have done it. He, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. It was fun, a long pink captain. Yeah, he's, he's impressive. <sighs> Isn't life funny? Mr. McKellen. Hey, speaking of splashy weddings, that reminds me of a certain royal wedding that took the world by storm. Oh, you mean Kate and Will? Oh, no, I was talking about Diana, <laughs> but also thanks for blowing my segue. <laughs> sorry. For once, for once, I had a good segue. Oh, sorry. That was real smooth. <sighs> and I just, it wasn't. I took a poop on it. <laughs> big, took a big old poop on it. Uh, no, okay. So Jamie is here to talk about the the one and only the Trump approved woman of the hour, Princess Diana, and her mysterious death. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I like to start out is with you just telling us like the bare facts of the situation. So like, who are okay. the major players? What happened that everyone agrees on? No conspiracy theory, just the facts. Sure. Um. Well, I suppose we'll start with me, me thinking, let me, we were like thinking of the angle of like a good British conspiracy theory. Because mm-hmm. I have to say, as a Brit, like my, this is totally subjective. I'm not speaking on behalf of all Brits. But I feel no, like no, cons- it's okay. You can speak for all Brits. Okay, I'm speaking for the UK. Okay. When I say, the uk, when I say <laughs> um, the uh, conspiracy theories feel pretty American, like by nature. Yes. It doesn't feel like a very British thing. We're quite like skeptical and you know, like, not believers, I suppose. That Um, makes perfect. I think, like, being fervent believers in anything is, like, pretty American of just being like, wow, the government's not telling us the truth. Yeah, and having, like, a real faith in something that there isn't much proof for. Something, like, pretty outlandish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Um, I think of, like, cults as being pretty American, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, in the Bible Belt is a big part of that, maybe, in my head. Um, I think you're right. I saw some map that was, like, percentage of people that believe that, like, Obama's part of the Illuminati and that believe that, like, Roswell really happened. And it was, like, very – well, it was weird. It was, like, pretty concentrated in, like – states where education isn't super strong or valued but then there was also weird clusters of it like along the liberal coasts which i thought was really interesting oh. yeah okay <laughs> anyways so you <laughs> think of, <laughs> so conspiracy theories are kind of american yeah, yes yeah so i was thinking let me think of like a, a pretty like i was thinking my own angle british or gay uh <laughs> i felt like british uh was 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 there was more material i did it's, like when you texted me to be like should i pick a gay one and i was like <laughs> what would be like a good gay conspiracy theory i could only find really dark ones like oh. aids was created to kill population and stuff and i was like no i can't find a funny spin on that well i mean it's not me I think you're funny around you so you'd find something funny but I, I don't know how much it. giggles I can make out of the AIDS epidemic <laughs> yeah no uh apart from that mm, what else is there like I don't know. I could create one. <laughs> Ian Gate isn't real. <laughs> oh my god, he's a gay man saying this. So you know it's true. <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh, um, so you picked British. So I picked British, and I went with the Princess Diana um, conspiracy theory. Now, here's the thing. I thought I thought it, it's obviously the most popular one of the, of the top of my head uh, for my generation. Um, But then when I started to look into it, like I I, I remember um, Googling at like 1 a.m. in bed because I couldn't sleep. And I found one survey, you know, where they say the percentage of population. I don't know if you've seen these on a lot of conspiracy theories. What percentage of the population buys this as true? Totally. And so you're saying, uh, what's the wide consensus? And I can tell you that 38% actually buys the conspiracy theory. So it's actually like... A pretty small margin in so, the UK. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how far reaching this survey was. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's very interesting. So the sixty-two percent consensus is that uh, is that Princess Diana died in a car crash. Um, she she she'd separated from Prince Charles, um, and she she'd also apparently uh, had a, a brief relationship with 
Dr. Khan, I can't remember his first name. Yeah, he was a plastic surgeon, surgeon I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And apparently she's still a bit heartbroken about him, um, but had met this new guy, Muhammad Al Fayed's son, uh, who uh, Muhammad Al Fayed is a, 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 an entrepreneur, Egyptian entrepreneur, um, owns Harrods. Uh, did you know that? He? No, I annoyed yeah. it still. He owns Harrods. I mean, a bit of context before yeah. this all happened in 1995, being an owner of Harrods, he's. Uh, I shouldn't laugh. This isn't funny. His <laughs> Britain citizenship Church application was denied uh, despite owning Harrods, which is a British institution, right? Yeah, it's like the biggest, it's like upscale, right? Yeah. It's a department it's store. It's a Knightsbridge. It's like the department. Like you go there if you want to buy an elephant for your garden and your big <laughs> house and, and they'll find a way of getting it. Yeah. Like, like you, there's no request too big for yeah. Harrods. Um, and his citizenship got denied. Do you know why? Well, that was in 1995 before the, um, before the death. It got denied again a second time. Um, they, they apparently it was, uh, his character. <laughs> really? But he's also, I'm not sure if he's a Muslim, but obviously it's a big, it, there's a big Muslim community in, in Egypt, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there was a Tory government, so real right-wing government at the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Of, of him applying the first time. Uh, so you think that it was some sort of like, we don't let immigrants in, like, <laughs> we don't tolerate Muslims. <laughs> We're like... I was trying to give you the objective point of view of the bat, and I'm already creeping in with my. Oh argument. no, no, that's fine. I like Are you that. Sure? I'm fine with You're that. You're like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. No, it doesn't uh, have to be totally objective, but I just okay. want to set the ground. Like, who was in the car? Okay, and so in the car, um, yeah. it was Lady Diana, um, which she became affectionately known after. Was she not still being technically a lady? Uh, well, yeah, she was. She was a lady before she mm. she descended from. I feel like there was some. Gosh, I can't remember my facts, can I? <laughs> um, she was a lady before. Here's another thing. Wow, bit more context. Her older sister was dating Prince Charles when they met. Really? How old is that? I never heard that. Yeah. That's super weird. Yeah. And then he ended up marrying the younger sister. Yeah, and then he dated the younger sister. <sighs> this sounds like a murder ballad. Right? Yeah. I mean, if they weren't a royal family, this would be like a Heat magazine, like TMZ type story. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, so to answer your question, in the car, um, they'd had a nice night out. Uh, they, they, they were at one of the hotels that Muhammad al Fayed owns. So, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So she was dating like the heir to this huge Empire. fortune. Yeah. yeah Dodi al Fayed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, they were both in the car. It was a Merc Mercedes. Uh, there was one driver. Um, and, and yeah, they were in a tunnel and it crashed. They were being pursued by paparazzi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And all of the French media, this was in Paris, all of the French media reported it as like a standard. It was pretty consistent with all of them. That, you know, there was nothing suspicious in everyone, everyone's, uh, instant report just saying she crashed and died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the, there was the driver and the bodyguard. And the only person yeah. who survived was the bodyguard. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I forgot that bit. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's why we both do research, brah. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that, oh, brah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Britain and America making friends. <laughs> okay. Ebony and Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> We're both clear white. Uh, okay, so is there anything else you want to say about like the background of the case? Context. Should I get a bit more context? Yeah. Is there anything? I think I've told you that. I'm only thinking context that supports my argument, by the way. That's fine. FYI. That's um, okay. Lay the groundwork as foreshadowing and then bring it back. Okay. It'll blow people's minds. Um, okay, well, one thing I was thinking as well. Well, you got to um, talk into the mic. It's like, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> Hey, Mike. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I was thinking that might be interesting is also giving, like, uh, hypothesizing about how events may have turned out had this happened today with oh, I like modern that. technology. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that's it. That's it. I've given you all the background info. Okay. So they go out to dinner and get in the car, the four of them. Mm. The paparazzi are chasing them. Yeah. And then they crash. Yeah. One thing that is odd, and it does support my argument, is that the driver, um, had, who'd been working for the Al Fayeds for like 11 years, uh, he wasn't working that night. He got called in to specifically drive them. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't working that night. They didn't just get, like, I imagine they've got a number of 
people at their disposal to drive them around. At and the hotel. someone else was supposed to be working. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. All right. Mm. Give me the conspiracy theory. So the theory is that, um, I mean, there are many different theories, like some are being, obviously they're all being disproven. Um, the one I really want to go with yeah. is, that, um, is that Prince Philip, uh, uh, basically the royal family enlisted the, the secret services to kill Diana. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so that like the, the very first point of that um, is, I suppose the first point that proves that theory is that, that the driver was called specifically to come and drive them. Mm-hmm. Um, toxicology reports proved that he was three times above the alcohol driving limit in France. Mm-hmm. He's going twice the actual speed. Um, yeah. This is just point one. Uh, <laughs> Already strong, <laughs> strong stuff. Um, and also, so he'd been working for the Al Fayed for 11 years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, Mohammed Al Fayed knows how much this guy gets paid. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of their theories was how does this guy have so much wealth? Because uh, the guy was apparently pretty wealthy. The driver? Yeah. Huh. And he's like, he must have been working for the Secret Service. And like the hard thing, the hard thing about proving somebody works for the Secret Service is you can't. That's the whole point of it, right? Right. They don't keep those records easily yeah. available. Is there in the UK like a Freedom of Information Act? There is. Okay. There is, but I mean, <laughs> but it's the Secret Service. That's gonna work. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, you are a conspiracy. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the driver gets called in. He's drunk. Why does he have all this money? Yeah. 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 So he's been he's been enlisted by the the secret services to kill Diana. His motive is money. Um, I mean, did he intend to die as well in this crash? Because that is what happened. That's my only point that make, gives me concern. Yeah. Um, but he was called to to go and drive them. That seems so bizarre. Right. Where was their regular driver? Do you know? What. From what I could tell, he was their regular driver. That's oh, okay. Maybe I assumed that, but I think I read it. Um, he he was their regular driver, so they were like, "We want." I just don't. I can't buy that they would have cared that much. Yeah. I mean, get, I don't have a driver, <laughs> so I can't. Yeah, what do you know about being fabulously wealthy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe you're like, no, that alien can't drive my car yeah i need the regular person who yeah. drives too fast under the influence of alcohol <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay next piece of evidence so next piece of evidence um there was reliability of the blood tests given mm-hmm. but that proved kind of nothing um the next piece of evidence this is the one that really shook me this piece um richard tomlinson his name was um, he used to work for this proves out little I know. I think it's MI6. Is it MI6? I'm from the UK and like You don't MI6, know if it's MI6? It? I think it's called MI6. Yes! Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I was like, is that a one or an I? <laughs> Wait, uh, I'm laughing at you, so but the funny. only reason I know about that is from James Bond movies. <laughs> yeah. So what the hell do I know? Well, exactly. I knew it from James Bond movies, but I was like, is that really it? Or is it a one? <laughs> like, were they not allowed to do it? Because they'd be like sued for defamation. I don't know. Oh my God, what um, if it's actually M16? <laughs> they just yeah, it. just so that they couldn't get into trouble. Yeah. And you know, our zip, our postcodes, they're called, the zip codes are called postcodes. They have numbers and letters. Oh. So like, I don't know if that, yeah, that just felt relevant. But anyways. Slice um, of life. Britain's. Slice of life. It's fascinating. Um, so, uh, yeah, Richard Tomlinson, he used to work for MI6. Um, he claimed that uh, the, um, the Secret Services were, in fact, following Diana, mm-hmm. um, pursuing her. They, there was a plan to assassinate her um, and that her death mirrored previous plans that the Secret Services had to assassinate the president of Serbia in 1992. Really? With a strobe light. Yeah, so let's talk about that flash. Okay, okay. let's do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you'd be a good police officer. You're yeah. not like not giving Look, anything away. I want to hear your version of the events, <laughs> you know? I'm so the strobe light felt so relevant. I don't know if you've seen the news recently, but you know, like a lot of pilots... 
um, we're, we're talking obviously thousands of feet in the air are having to land early because people have been pointing laser, just really? regular public, like publicly available laser pens yeah. into the cockpits. And it's like temporary blinding the, the, the pilots and they're having to land. Oh my God. I don't know if you knew about this. Mm-mm. So uh, it was in the UK, uh, I read this a couple of weeks ago, but I'm sure it happened in America too. So that's how strong they are, you know. So if somebody, I imagine, was closer Mm -hmm. when they were doing that. But this bright flash, um, yeah, apparently, uh, some of the theories um, think that it could have been the paparazzi who were employed um, to do it. Uh, Also, um, there was... This links to another piece of evidence about, which is on my fourth page. <laughs> um, and one of the cars, there was a car with, that, that one of the journalists works in, a white Fiat Uno. Um, uh, and White a, Fiat Uno for my oh American no. listeners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could have done like my New York Italian voice for that, but I went. <laughs> Fiat Uno. <laughs> That was a perfect to tell No, it was not. <laughs> oh, the hands, thank you. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was good. I speak sign. <laughs> I don't. Um, yeah, yeah. So so before the crash, there was a big flash of light yeah. that pretty much everyone agrees on. Yeah. And for all you Americans out there, there was an American witness who testified <gasps> to seeing that bright flash. Now you know it's true. Yep. Americans never lie. Nope. Mm-hmm. They don't. They're truthful people. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, um, but also the car, the car um, being driven by, by paparazzi. In the, in the white Fiat, he um, apparently he was working for secret services, and so it could have been him that, in fact, initiated this bright flash. Yeah. But also, perhaps swerved into the car, causing the Mercedes to crash. Mm. Sorry, I'm linking two bits. No, that's good. Of evidence, link there. it all. Well, and there is like real evidence that the CIA does, or CIA, <laughs> that like this British secret service sometimes employs photographers yeah to like capture evidence for them like yeah. that's a real thing yeah the c1a do that um oh. <laughs> no, oh, damn, no. sorry. good joke good joke um the fb1 yeah 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 no there is evidence there is yeah. um like it's just it like i feel like the nature of people anyways is to make up like a narrative if you can't get the truth anyways do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like just like as actors I'm sure you do this if you don't get a job it's like they didn't find me attractive (laughs) it's never like about the acting right it's just like oh they were biased against me probably yeah 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 exactly because you never get told that information so I feel like that's what we do with anything we'll create a narrative for something we can't get the objective truth from Mm -hmm. um so yeah yeah I'm aware of that but yeah, so I, I think the bright flash, um, yeah. Yeah, an interesting bright flash. Yeah. yeah. So the so you think, okay, one of the paparazzo was employed by the Secret Service. Mm-hmm. Um, ugh, I wanted to ask you something about that, but I don't remember what it was. Oh. We're all not caffeinated enough. I can, I can give you the... the ways that they try to disprove him if you yes want. yeah do that <laughs> okay so um basically he uh, he ended up committing suicide this guy the paparazzo, the paparazzo. really yeah. how soon after um are you calling him paparazzo because that's masculine and it would be paparazzi like feminine i think it's just because there's only one of them and uh, all is singular yeah, and okay. also fuck i'm so pretentious <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear myself doing that. But that's so funny because you're like pretentious thinking like being like a grammatical Nazi. No, I hate that analogy, sorry. But also um, <laughs> I'm like so up on the like uh, sexual like liberation. Like, are you doing that because of, because we don't need that. Because it's masculine. Yeah. I like that. Good, you're a good feminist. How about no sexual labels, huh? I love that. How about we don't gender people we don't even exactly. know, guys? Exactly. Let's just call it Diana. Mm. <laughs> or them. I love it. Uh, yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah. I like that you like <laughs> noticed that and we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, podcasts aren't pretentious at all. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known you to be pretentious. No, That's not me. Uh, okay, yeah, so tell me what's the, he, he killed himself. <laughs> yeah, so he committed suicide. Um, that's not how they disproved him, by mm-hmm. the way. Sorry, just a bit of context there. But um, he, uh, so... 
he yeah apparently he wasn't they they just proved that he wasn't working for the secret service which i I think they can pretty much do for anyone because like we said there's not like much evidence held on on these matters Mm. um muhammad al-fayed uh who is a bit of a showman and isn't the most trustworthy of characters in the public eye Mm -hmm. um uh did try and say that he committed this suicide out of guilt for what had happened Oh, and so the Al Fayed family thinks it was the British government. Yeah, so the Al Fayed family spearheaded the whole investigation, like what? into it being a conspiracy. Yeah. Oh, I did not yeah. see that. I mean, they're super loaded and obviously could pay for this and did not let it go. Wow. And are yeah. they still like. I mean, yeah. I, I would imagine so. I didn't even Google this, but in my mind, it's no question of a doubt he'll still be paying someone to do something. Yeah. Yeah. That's like very he's a very stubborn, wealthy guy. Yeah. Super weird. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, so he said that that was guilt or that um, the Secret Services <laughs> killed him. <laughs> Made it look like a suicide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he doesn't know if it was the French or the British mm. Secret Services. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy was found in his car in a forest. Um, his head was detached. Wait yeah. a second. And they ruled it a suicide? His head was detached. Apparently, the, the thing is, with these, with these articles and everything you look at uh, online, they'll only disprove what the posited like, allegation is. They won't say what actually happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, just in case people try and use that as some kind of allegation, then they can disprove that. But he, um, Which I think is how conspiracy theorists like justify it in their brain. is always like, oh, well, you're saying what I said isn't true, but you're not telling us what really happened. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And like scanning through the wikipedia i was like well why are they not telling why are they not saying what really happened that makes me believe that they've got something to hide yeah yeah um but uh, and i feel like if this happened in modern day apple would be the people like yep yeah, do you know what we're, go- we're gonna unlock this phone and give you <laughs> we're gonna give you what happened do you know what i <laughs> yeah, mean yeah but they won't yeah. unlock phones i feel like for lady diana they would have <laughs> I you think, think Steve Jobs have. loved Diana enough that yeah. he would have done it? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I just feel like in today's day and age, we're like, at CIA, mm. like, it's all about Silicon Valley now, isn't it? I feel yeah. pretty safe about that. That's interesting. Yeah, I, ugh, in spite of knowing people in tech, I trust tech more than I trust the government. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, Even though I know those a-holes like have no idea what they're doing. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like they're good people though, no? (sighs) Well, you're asking the wrong person because I'm like from the Bay Area and saw it turn into like this. Pretentious. Yeah, just into this like nothing but tech and the only thing that matters is just like tech and like software. And so I think some of them are shitty people. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah, I think a lot of them are probably great. (laughs) But I think, I don't know, there's been all these articles about just like Silicon bro culture and like all of the gross just being that anonymous lifestyle where they're just like, we're always in the right and like mob mentality is the way to go. Self-righteous. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I suppose it favors me in certain ways. Uh, so I'm biased about it. <laughs> That's fair. Like yeah. how? Oh, well, if I said, <laughs> I might get into trouble. No, um, just things like, I've got friends like who sublet their places on Airbnb, you know, and uh, and like in New York, for example, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like the, the local county are trying to get tenants information who are doing it so that they can prosecute and Airbnb are like, no, we're not giving you it. Oh, um, interesting. I feel like it's democratic, you know, like yeah. it's taking away from hoteliers like Al Fayed. Yeah. Or like back. Ubers give like taking away from taxi yeah. monopolies. Yeah. Funny, funny tangent. Um my dad's a black cab driver. Yeah. And no, he's not actually black. The cab's black. Um but, uh, <laughs> they're black in London. <laughs> that is not what I assume, but Just all right. Like, you know, because they're not yellow. Yeah. In, in um oh no, another funny story. I was telling this story to an Asian guy, um like Oriental guy. Um do you say Oriental here? No. How do you distinguish <laughs> between how do you distinguish between Indian and like you Wait, know the different types of Asian people say here. Oriental in Britain. Yeah, well, really? No, yeah, hang on, I do. Maybe not. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, clearly you got it. Is from it somewhere. bad? You reacted so badly. I d- I think of it as being pretty, or just as like Backwards. an o- super old fashioned. What's the What's the modern? <laughs> I think like Eastern. Asian. 
Okay, but that covers Indian and. That's interesting. No, I feel like usually if someone is like, I'll say like South Asian, Southeast Asian, East I Asian. I don't know the difference. That's okay. My geography That's is okay. bad. We're all we're all learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think like, or at least like growing up in the Bay Area, saying South Asian, South Asian means like Indian, Pakistani, okay. Bangladeshi. Um, I've hardly seen any here in LA, oh, by the way. So fascinating, really. Oh, you're not hanging out in the right neighborhoods. I'll yeah, take you okay. around. Yeah, do it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. Anyway, so sorry. your friend was what, like Indian? Who was? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no. Just I was, I was telling a guy this story yeah. um, who who came from New York, and I was saying my dad's a black cab driver, um, and I and I kind of made the analogy. It's not like if if you were telling me your dad's a yellow cab driver. Uh, <laughs> do you see what I mean? It was really dumb. Oh, no. um, and he was oh, like, no. but he read, he found it really funny because uh, it turned out his dad was a cab driver. Oh, that, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, then you were telling that joke to the right person. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. found it really funny, and then he just kept being racist to me. Um, but that's fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So your dad's a cab driver cab driver his car is black mm-hmm. um and uh and yeah he he's really annoyed about the uber thing at the moment he's like they're taking away jobs and blah 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 because in the uk it's, i don't know if you know it's pretty much a tradition and you study some people study for seven years to remember the streets wow so like you rock up to an interview and they're like okay take me they don't even have to say a street they can say take me from I'll give you an American equivalent. Take me from Birds mm-hmm. uh, in Franklin Village to to um, to the Rockwell mm-hmm. in Los Feliz, mm-hmm. and they from those two p- points, you need to give them the exact addresses, mm-hmm. um, this, the exact directions. You know, like bear right, stay here, turn right on so and so street, um, and like so. Some people take years to do it, and now obviously it's like redundant now because we've got GPS, GPS and an Uber. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and like, I I have no empathy for my dad. I'm like, dad, I love Uber. Like I use it all the time. Yeah, like this is how the world is going. Yeah. Like it's just inevitable. Sorry, dad. Yeah. I mean, you can go back to school. <laughs> just go back to school in your go 50s. On, dad. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Suck it up. <laughs> Wow, that that was a really enlightening tangent for both sorry, of us, I I'm think. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know what's uh, funny is that like the last time I heard someone genuinely use the word, word oriental, it was like a friend of mine who is from Holland and so she cute. and like people reacted like I just reacted of like don't say that. And she was like I don't I don't understand. It's just like fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just old fashioned. It's, it's like using the word like colored or something. Oh, uh, okay. Like, That's how it seems. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's like monstrous. Yeah. No. It's also like context dependent, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I think like, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, God. How did we get on to that? Um, we got onto that by me saying Apple and, and Uber, you know. Yeah, if be... this happened today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they might have just gotten an Uber if this happened today. And then there wouldn't be any of this drama. No, it would have been a Prius. Mm-hmm. They would have gotten there safely. Gosh. Now they weren't wearing seatbelts, is they that right? They weren't. Yeah. They weren't. And apparently Lady Diana was a real fervent seatbelt wearer. She always wore her seatbelt mm-hmm. um that rang true for me because I'm pretty OCD about a seatbelt good um <laughs> I did it on the way here just because I once got told when I was like learning to drive in in London um which by the way consists of about a year's worth more lessons than it does in California really <laughs> um they uh, we'll let anyone drive <laughs> yeah um they uh they it, they explained to me how a crash works. I'm sure this was pretty obvious to everyone else, but it wasn't to me until she said it. And then I was like, right, from now on, I will always wear a seatbelt. Um, if you're going at, say, 50 miles an hour and you're not wearing a seatbelt, at the point of impact, your body carries on going at 50 miles an hour mm-hmm. into that seat right in front of you or the windscreen. And that's why crashes are so bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and so since then, I'm, I've been pretty OCD about it. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, well, I'm a nice person like Princess Diana and she's the same as me. Yeah. And she would have been OCD. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you really are projecting yourself into this <laughs> totally. story. I love it. Totally. Yeah. Okay, so what's the other evidence for being a conspiracy? Other evidence. Um, I'm going to get on to real trashy evidence in yes, a minute. Yes, yes. Um, for now, even more projecting. I want the I want the sun level. Oh, do you want the sun level? <laughs> okay, cool. So <laughs> here we go. Oh boy. Um, 
Diana was so much more popular than Prince Charles. Mm. Everyone loved her. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't know if you've ever had an ex where like they fucking t am I out to swear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah like it's insisted upon okay cool they fucking <laughs> take all of your friends yeah and i imagine like princess diana probably took all the friends she was the cool one and like so prince charles is left at home all the time and, and the friends are like the entire nation of england exactly yeah exactly yeah. and like and, and apparently they both had affairs and stuff but yeah i think i think everyone at one point in their life has been the, <laughs> this is so sun, by the way, but you asked for it. Yeah. Um, this is TMZ. I love it. Um, uh, everyone's at one point been the unattractive one in the couple. And I think we can all testify to the fact that that was, that was Prince Charles. Um, and so, yeah. and so like, he, he would have just been so jealous that she's like going off and having way more friends, way more fun, like got more attractive boyfriends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel well, like... Well, Dodie was so-so. <laughs> okay, but Khan was all right. Khan, Khan was, was ooh, dreamy doctor. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I would leave a prince for Khan. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I feel like um, jealousy, jealousy played a big part there. Um, mm. but he, uh, and like, and he, he then went with, was it Camilla Parker Bowles? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember all of that drama. That's how I learned what a tampon was. What? Yeah. From that, I read that quote in the paper. What quote? Oh, you don't know about this? No. Oh, this is like the only part of this story I know by heart. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, while they were still married, someone from, I forget who leaked it, either like a bodyguard or somebody, leaked some note from him to Camilla that was like, I wish I were your tampon. <gasps> what yes truth what yeah ryan do you remember this <gasps> yeah ryan verifies it yeah he said i like wish i was a tampon inside of you <gasps> and i saw that and i was like i don't know how old i was when all this was going down but little and i like think i either asked my mom or asked someone on the playground like what What's is a, a tampon, tampon? Mm -hmm. and did they tell you straight up mm -hmm. it soaks your blood up mm -hmm. <sighs> and i was like that's the grossest there is nothing sexy about that at all. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. I mean, with that, that's maybe another theory that he was into really kinky stuff, and she wasn't. <laughs> I wonder. He's like, he only wanted to have sex on her period, and she was like, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do this. No thanks. Oh. Also, I'll never get pregnant with an heir if we keep doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, they have got a good sense of humor, though, haven't they? If he was joking, if he, if was, he was joking, joking yeah, yeah. I would be surprised because he doesn't seem like someone with that good of a sense of humor, but maybe. I, I know, right? I'm just wondering, do they just use, would she just use regular tampons? Are they like royal ones? <laughs> like, where do they buy them? <laughs> she has like a mink covered tampon. <laughs> and they don't call it heavy bleed or something. It's like, what would it be called? A ro royal discharge. <laughs> a wider womb. <laughs> she has a wide set womb. <laughs> Oh, yeah, why do royalty... I think about that a lot when it comes to, like, royalty and celebrities. Like, do they just use, like, normal toilet paper? Do you know, I remember reading a story how somebody stole toilet paper when they visited the, um, the palace. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's all I remember. I don't remember if it was nice <laughs> or anything. Well, good story, thanks. Yeah, there you go. You're yeah. welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow, we are going wild on these we tangents. Are. We sure are. Um, so jealousy was maybe a motivation. Yeah. yeah like, sexual jealousy. A big one. Um, yeah, there's, um, so there's the transport. This is like less of a theory. This is just, this, this is all kind of evidence to prove the theory that I put forward. Yeah. Um, another, so we spoke about the seatbelt. Uh, the other bit is the, the transport. So, uh, the very first call to the emergency services was made at 12.26 a.m. Um, the ambulance didn't arrive at the hospital until 2.06 Really? A.m. Um, now, it was quite a big crash, so, like, you do have to take into account, like, how long it took them to get her body out of the wreckage. And they might have been doing some amount of, like, life-saving stuff at the scene. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and apparently... They actually only left, 
it actually only once they got her out it only took 26 minutes to get to the hospital which i suppose makes sense so that's like an hour of whatever was happening yeah getting Mm -hmm. her out cutting the car apart however they do that Mm -hmm. um but it also is a bit suspicious too no I mean, you look to Ryan for cover. <laughs> Come Ryan? on, help me. <laughs> Shrug. I know nothing about cars getting cut, but surely it should be two minutes. <laughs> yeah, you uh, think when when a princess's life is on the line? Yeah, right. We well, like also mine. Like if I it happened to me, I'd hope it would take them quicker. I, I forgot that you are Diana in your mind. <laughs> By the way, do you ever like, I I only realized a couple of years ago that not everyone does this, but whenever I read a book or watch a film, I'm the protagonist. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I thought everyone did that, but they don't. Yeah, not with a movie, but definitely with a book. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's me. The Hunger Games, I was counting it. Oh, aww, that's adorable. <laughs> I can just see you in a little jumpsuit shooting people in the woods. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I could. I'm being like, I nominate myself. <laughs> I have all idea. I'm selfless. <laughs> That's so you. I wouldn't do it for my brother, though. So, <laughs> I hope not. he does not listen to this. Jeez. <laughs> no, I don't think he does. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I'd do it for my sister. Oh, is she younger? No, she's older, but she's like a more valuable member of society. Oh. Like, she's a, she's a lawyer okay. and like defense like people. She's like a public interest lawyer. She like defends poor people. Oh. So I, I think I'd take that into account too. Ah, uh, well, I feel you, you add a lot to the community. <laughs> With my podcast. <laughs> yeah, and your social media work. Sure, it's really important. <laughs> I'm really giving back to society. <laughs> oh, okay. no. So we've got... So you've got the transport. Yes. Um, okay, the next piece of information is the embalming of her body. Ooh, I don't yeah. know about that. So... I'll give you both sides of the argument. The embalming um, was done pretty soon after after she died. Um, Muhammad Al Fayed said they they were engaged and she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And if you embalm a body, apparently it can render any pregnancy test invalid. It can it it, it just you you won't be able to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and he thinks because it was done so soon afterwards, it was almost like a way of covering up the fact that she was pregnant. Mm. Um, he alleges that they were about to announce the engagement and the pregnancy the following Monday after they died. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, here's where it falls apart a bit. Um, he paid people to say certain stuff. So he paid a jeweler that he'd been going to for 20 years to say that they'd bought an engagement ring and it was getting resized. Um, it contradicted with the shop assistant who said, no, they didn't get it resized. Uh, CCTV footage showed they left with nothing, just a catalogue. Um, really? Yeah. And then like he alleged that they, they went to a villa uh, with an interior designer and spoke about living there. Um, I think it was one of the villas they owned and a former staff member. Just one of their villas. Just one of them, you know. Yeah, sure. One of the lesser nice ones. Sure, 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 sure. Um, and uh, and apparently there was no interior designer present. There was only one guy um, who was a former member of staff for the Al-Fayeds, um, but then was dismissed. And uh, and he says they weren't there for the three hours that Mohammed Al-Fayed says with an interior designer saying, we're going to live here. Here's going to be the baby's room. Um, they were there for 20 minutes and it was just him and them. And then they left. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, and also Mohammed Al-Fayed sat on this pregnancy information for three and a half years if it was true because he didn't make it until 2001 oh to a newspaper yeah that's pretty Mm. shady but i also thought he may not have found out until later as well that this was a thing Mm. um, that that she was pregnant and but my first thought was (laughs) uh do you remember chicago the movie Oh, you know when Renee Zellweger is like. Do I remember like, Chicago? You know when Renee Zellweger is like. When Roxy's my like about the baby, mm-hmm. and she's not pregnant. That was my first thought. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy your first thought went to a Broadway musical. <laughs> That's why I went friends. It was a movie. It was a movie. Oh, um, okay. Was oh, was the involved. musical after the movie? Oh no, I the musical was it... before the movie. Oh, okay. But my inspiration was the movie. I respect that. Just had to be sure because then I feel like I might have the Weinstein's on my side. <sighs> Can you imagine having the Weinsteins on your side? Oh my gosh. The dream. It's like the world on your side, isn't yeah. it? 
Totally. Okay. Um, the last piece of evidence I want to talk about is the butler's letter. Oh, did you I read about that? that? Oh, well, that's weird. Tell okay, me. so there's. This... Oh, she was scared. She was scared. Yes, yes, yes. yes she had I told him. It, she, yeah, like she allegedly gave him some letter, like her former butler, to be like, "I'm scared. I think there's going to be a car accident. I think they're going to kill me, and it's my ex-husband." Wow. Yeah, he says. But he's never given anyone the letter. Like, mm. some newspaper reporter got to see the letter, but then, like, nobody's ever... So I'm bringing this up because I think it supports my argument that this isn't a real conspiracy theory. Because I think that he is, like, one of the many people who was like, oh, I can get attention out of this. Money. And, money. Yeah, exactly. And, like, sell his story to the son or whatever. Yeah. And be like, oh, it's totally... Here's the letter. I can't leave you have it, but you can look at it real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember at the time, maybe that it did come out, but maybe I'm just, like, making it up in my head. Do you think it did? Maybe. I remember, like, there being, like, maybe... Oh, gosh, I'm probably just making this up. But, like, they were <laughs> testing the handwriting or something. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm, maybe, um, maybe the source I read was biased. But a lot of people, like... The hard thing is, like, they're going to assassinate character, aren't they? Like, when they, when they do these things. And he didn't seem like a very plausible, like legit person just like Muhammad al-Fayed they assassinated his character so you think there was like a smear campaign against the former butler yeah yeah just all of them the the, the butler Muhammad al-Fayed um and I suppose like he's they they seem they came across a bit paranoid like the state hates them and um but yeah that did strike me as odd that she was scared yeah. She was scared. But she was such a brave person. Like, she didn't seem scared in her everyday life. Like, she was championing, you know, like, touching, a, a, the, being at AIDS victim's bedside, you know, yeah. when they, you didn't know how you could get it. In and, the 80s when it was, like, taboo. Yeah. yeah. And, like, landmine walking and stuff. She was pretty fearless. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that seems out of character but maybe that's also like it's not that's not really doesn't feel very tangible does it but if you're being hounded by cars all the time that feels more close to death maybe hmm maybe hmm, hmm. um is there any more points you want to make yes. before i make my verdict princess diana um there's nothing I'm never going to be satisfied, but <laughs> there's nothing as of now. Okay, that's fair. Check your why? Facebook later. <laughs> like, that's fair. Off air. Uh, like, why? What about, I mean, we kind of talked about, like, you wanting to do a British conspiracy theory. Yeah. But, like, what about this is, like, drawing you in? At the time that it happened, um, I suppose that the most American equivalent was the JFK assassination. But we knew that was an assassina assassination, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but... It was it was legit at the time. Like it, it wasn't just the death. It would they were pretty ripe. The conspiracy theories. It like it did have quite a lot of rise. Oh really? Um, like yeah, around in newspapers at the time. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So you know, like that. Uh, I was telling you the thirty eight percent. Like it was a lot of people. And when you've got enough money to pay people and get evidence, like it, it seemed legit. Um, and everybody loved her. Like she was just so likable. It was a real public mourning. Like yeah. on the day of the funeral, I couldn't get, like it was impossible to. If you live in London, it was impossible to get around. It was just packed with people and flowers. Mm. And um, yeah, and I remember where I was exactly at the time uh, when 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 the funeral was going on. I was in class. It was year six. That's your final year of like primary school. Mm -hmm. So like eleven. Um, and like, I remember that day there was a girl that nobody, <laughs> there was a girl in my class that nobody really liked, oh. Jenna, and she kind oh, of was Jenna. annoying and people bullied her, but, um, she, uh, for that day, the class just called a truce. We liked Jenna and we all just <sighs> mourned Princess Diana and, and Jenna brought in like memorabilia, um, and we just liked her for a day. Um, that was the power of Princess Diana's legacy. She could make even Jenna popular. Exactly, for a day. Yeah, yeah. And then you went back to bullying Jenna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just a day. Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. I think even here, people were like so connected. Like I remember seeing video of people like sobbing in the street. 
Yeah. It's super weird. It's because they remain like so impartial, the royal family. She was the first celebrity, like royal family member, wasn't she? She was mm, yeah. like a true celebrity, like did stuff with it. Yeah, like wasn't just like here I am in Buckingham Palace doing stuff. Yeah. What are they what do they do? Like what do they actually do? What exactly? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Exactly. I mean, the, when, at school, the one thing we learned that they do really is they're really good for the British economy. They bring in a lot of tourism. Really? Um, of people wanting to see the palace. And, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But then there's always, there's always being posts of how much they cost the economy too. Yeah. Like if they travel to, I think Balmoral's their place in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah, I can't even remember the number, but it was in the millions. They shut down a whole train in the whole... Just like, for them to go to their other palace. Yeah. Wow. And I was I remember thinking, why a train? Why not a, their own plane? Yeah. Why would you not just because it's tradition? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So you're not a royalist, right? You don't like At it. At all. <laughs> they are funny though. There's a video on YouTube that you should check out where um where Harry and Wills are being interviewed and and they're both like making slight comments at each other. Mm-hmm. So um Harry keeps like making comments. So in t- so imagine it's like Ryan and I speaking to an interviewer mm-hmm. and uh and we're answering questions, but they're making little slight comments to each other like yeah you're ginger and then like talking about what he says and then harry and then harry's going back yeah you're bald and then like <laughs> talking about like and it's so funny it's yeah really i mean cool. they're charming they're so charming they're a lot of fun yeah, yeah. and they're like they sparkle like they do. you can just like when they're in a crowd of people they're just like emanating light they do they do i agree i prefer harry i think I and apparently that. he's that you know there's conspiracy there is that is is it a conspiracy that um that prince charles isn't his dad really it's someone else interesting yeah some ginger man yeah mm. like damian lewis or someone oh what if <laughs> no there's an actual guy I just okay. him up. <laughs> damian lewis is like seven years older than <laughs> prince <laughs> It's a long shot, but... Oh, no. Uh, I, I just started another conspiracy. Oh, no, I'm not going to even say that. That's bad. <laughs> what, that children can have babies? Uh, or that Lady Diana had a certain fetish, but I won't go there. Oh, yeah, don't. Please be no. respectful I to her, her memory. I, I know will. You, I can tell you do. <laughs> you see, you hate the monarchy, but I feel like you kind of love them. I don't hate them, Um it feels like I kind of feel sorry for them, I suppose. Like, hmm. but it feels a bit pointless, and it's like a tradition, you know, like uh, like red phone boxes and black taxis. We were talking about earlier, you know, the traditions that kind of aren't relevant anymore. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Like, it's just a tradition. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's weird to be born into that and be like, oh, I'll just never be able to have my own life. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and like. I remember uh, you always see like that they're under a lot of scrutiny about how much they spend just because you know obviously it's at the taxpayer's expense Mm -hmm. uh but like I remember when Harry joined uh was when he enlisted he went and spent 726 pound I'm rounding it up it was 700 and something um in a store just on alcohol for his mates like it was a trolley full of booze yeah well I probably would have done the same yeah at his age you know yeah or maybe not because I haven't got high tolerance for alcohol but I'm sure they have (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they've been drinking since they were four (laughs) yeah I'd have just got an alco pop yeah what is an alco pop like a Bacardi Breezer Oh, like a sweet, like it's girly drink. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna start calling them Alco Pops. Alco Pop. Alco Pops. Okay. Well, you've laid out some very interesting evidence. Mm, <laughs> I'm trying to think if I have like specific things I want to challenge you on. Well, like, yeah, I, I think the main crux of my like why I don't find it credible is that like the only people who have come forward in support of this theory, like the only evidence is people saying, yeah, I saw something weird. And the only people who've come forward are like a rich flamboyant, uh, crazy man, <laughs> like a be, like disgruntled former employee of the Royal family. And then like a couple random bystanders. Right. Yeah. Is there anyone like more credible that's come forward about it? You mean like somebody that has no involvement? Yeah, on somebody who side. like isn't going to make money off of supporting the theory or like. Not that I know of, mm-hmm. but then also you have to take into account how, like, what we were just speaking about, how sheltered their lives were and how many people they would have encountered that were impartial, anyways. You know, mm-hmm. which is pretty unlikely. Like, 
Because like everyone's mean. invested on profiting off everyone's of them. Everyone's paid a lot of money to be around them and take care of their life. Yeah. It's not like you and I, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have butler. <laughs> Um, mm, okay, anything else you want to say before I make my decision? Make your verdict. Mm -hmm. um, um, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no one's tried that before. Okay, Just I believe trust it. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> when do you believe me? <laughs> good point, good point. Okay. All right, well, now I need to take a moment to deliberate. Do it. So I need you to keep people entertained for I guess just a minute here. You want me to sing? Yeah, I want you to sing or tell a little story or a joke or talk about your pilot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do. Um. Oh. Oh no, no, that's the American national anthem. I was gonna <laughs> say. I don't know the British <laughs> one. <laughs> no. Are you rule Britannia? Do you know it? How's it go? Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Oh yeah. No, I only know make fun one. Rule <laughs> Britannia, marmalade and jam. <laughs> I threw sausages at my old man. That's like a dad, my old man. Mm -hmm. Um, funny story. Uh, my dad, <laughs> uh, I, um, my, my dad, uh, all my friends used to call me when I was like 10 years old, 11 years old, all my friends called me the terrorist because my dad <laughs> would never give me any money and I had to terrorize him to get money. Um, I remember my friends, my, my friend's dad owned a pub and he'd say, Jamie, every Friday there's this really dumb man that dances at the pub and just gives us money. Just come and get some from him. And I was like, no, he sounds like a paedophile. I'm not, I'm not coming to the pub. And I put it off for ages. <laughs> no. But then one time, um, <laughs> but then one time everyone was going to Chesington, like this theme park, and my dad wouldn't give me the money. Um, and the usual method failed, as in he'd come home drunk from the pub and me and my mum would raid his pockets and get, get the leftover money. That didn't work. So, uh, so I was like, okay, right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to this pub and dance with this weird old man and he's going to give me some money. Um, and so I go to my friend's pub. We sneak in through the back, like, because they lived above it. Uh, we go in, there's this man dancing, and I like, go up behind him, he turns around, it's my dad. It was Stop my it. dad that would dance and give people fucking money, but he never Stop gave it. me any Stop it, no. Money. Is this a true story? It's a true story. Jamie. And so I looked at him, and I was like, ugh, and like I turned and ran, and he what? followed after me. And my friends were like, what's going on? Because they'd never met my dad. They were new to the area, the kids whose dad owned the pub. And, uh, and I ran away, and he came after me, like followed me, and the boys were like, Jamie, where are you going? I'm like, he's a fucking pedophile. I'm going. <laughs> like I'm running away from him. And then my dad came came up to me, pulled me around and started dancing with me. Oh, and whenever he was trying to be funny, my dad always did an Indian accent. I don't know oh, why, no. but it was always his go-to funny accent. And in front of my friends, he was like, oh, it's the little terrorist. He called me the terrorist. In this story of my cannot get worse. And danced with me and gave me five pound, which wasn't enough for Chesington. And that wow. was it. <laughs> Jamie, what? is up with your dad i know he's so uncool <laughs> <laughs> what that's an insane story yeah it's pretty insane sorry i just smacked the mic it's okay i loved it um yeah you have such an interesting life to <laughs> no me. that's not interesting i love it when you tell stories because every single time you tell a story about your past I, my jaw's on the floor because i don't understand it because it's so gross <laughs> horrible no. it makes you feel good about yourself no not it's so british that was <laughs> such a british story your dad was down the pub dancing around giving people money yeah giving your mates money you know um you know you've got shameless here mm -hmm. you know that's like a, it was a british show first i didn't know well i was like how are they gonna do it in america because they're not shameless every poor person i've met there is really ashamed of it like in the u.s yeah americans are so self-improving aren't they they're like you huh. can see they're really upset but they're like i'm so happy i'm great right now like interesting yeah. like i've got big dreams and i'm gonna make them happen yeah exactly hmm. uh yeah and like the houses in shameless like they're so huge Oh, I still haven't watched it, but now yeah. I want to. Yeah, the British ones really, they're really poor and yeah. they, they're shameless. They own it. Yeah. Um, my dad's a bit like a character from that show, I suppose. Yeah. Very interesting. 
oh my god i could listen to you talk about your family <laughs> for an entire hour okay no <laughs> but also you did a great job talking about a different family the royal family oh yeah mm -hmm. okay here's how we do it on lizard people i give you out of 10 how much i want to believe like how emotionally compelling your story was yeah. and then how much you've actually convinced me to believe this can we just do the theory. subtext of the emotional work because that yes. basically means how good you were at pitching this to me. yes exactly what a good performer you are. so if i don't get a 10 i hate you well i, <laughs> I will never give anyone a 10 <laughs> okay. i don't like anyone that much but those are your issues yeah that's true that's on me <laughs> and we'll get into them sometime <laughs> Um, how much I want when we turn this into a therapy podcast, Ryan, which we joked about on the last episode. Okay. How much I want to believe I'm giving you seven out of 10 paparazzi, oh. which is honestly pretty good. That's I a good showing. Shit. No, don't feel shit. Jamie, no. <laughs> but like, I just did so well. I tried my best. Well, here's, let me explain my, re your best is not good enough. Let me explain my reason. <laughs> because uh, you did. This was like my American Idol audition <laughs> all over again. And I'm but Simon. I'm going to try hard. I can improve. Can I have a second go? You've embarrassed me on the stage. <laughs> That's my Simon impression. Um, well, because like. It's like you you tell a compelling tale of like jealousy and secrets and like a powerful secret service, but also like it's there's there's something like it's just not it like there's something about it that I'm just like, oh, but part of me still wants it to just be a tragedy, like the emotional part of my brain. This isn't on you, but like the emotional part of my brain is like, oh, no, I just want it to be a sad tragedy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And instead of like, oh, these assholes have been covering yeah. it up this whole time. Yeah. I mean, you'd make a bad cop. Or solicitor, just okay. saying. Okay, well, I really, your opinion of me has been changing fast and furious through this whole podcast. <laughs> I'm oh, a bad sorry, solicitor. am I attacking you loads? No, it's fine. <laughs> just go home and cry. <laughs> well, I was expecting you to say, but there's just not enough facts, and that I would have accepted. Well, that's when we get to the do believe. Oh, okay. There's not enough facts, oh, and okay. I'm going to have to give you three out of ten fake wedding rings because the only, like I said at the end there, the only facts are from weirdos <laughs> and people who paid for evidence. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. It's not, this part's not on you. This part's the theory. No, but I just want to take it as me. Okay. I'm well, a struggling artist and that's how I do. <laughs> <laughs> this was just like an audition. I'm pained. You gave me the very good advice of like, if you go into an audition and you don't get the part, it's because they don't want to have sex with you. <laughs> Are you telling me you don't want to fuck me? No, I really don't. Oh, what? Because you're like a brother. Why did you invite me? Yeah. This is like under fool's pretense, you fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> You've been From flirting this whole time. No, I For everyone who can't see this, she is such a fucking what? flirt. I don't know what you're talking about as I take my top off. <laughs> You could have just lied. Like, I clearly wouldn't have gone with you. I'm super gay. I know. <laughs> just pretend. What kind of friend are you? Jamie, I'm sorry. I'm not the type to flirt with my gay friends. <laughs> I know you don't want all this hot Bonnie. Hot <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie. I'm so hot. Um, yeah, well, listen, I'm just saying I'm going to take that into every audition with me. And then that's good. And then if you don't get it, it's like, oh, well, I wasn't their type. I don't know what's worse though. I didn't get the job because I'm shit, or I didn't get the job because they don't want to fuck me. What is worse? Wow. They're That's both bad. And then yeah. I think maybe it's both. Mm. Well, I'm used to people not wanting to sleep with me, so that feels oh, more acceptable. Up. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, tell it to the guys who reject me. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you approach guys? Do you ever approach them and then they reject you? Um, only a couple times in my life, and honestly, I'm I'm pretty sure that one of them is in the closet. But, <laughs> but oh yeah, that's definitely happened to me. Oh yeah, I'm scared to approach people. Are they just you? have to approach me. Yeah, I have to settle for the people that approach me. Really, you I should don't approach, approach people them. more. No, I'm scared. I'm scared of just rejection. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it sucks, but once it happens a couple times, you start to be like, Get used oh to it. yeah. It's not the end of my life. Yeah, I, I can recall one time that it happened. 
<laughs> Where? Uh, um, I was at a club and there was this really tall guy and he uh, he looked a bit like Russell Brand. Oh, man. Um, and he was quite cool. And then he had a really great sense of humor. And like that always works. That is such, it? that's the lucky term. Yeah. And so yeah. I was trying to like chime up um, and he, uh, he just straight up was like, you're about a foot shorter than me. Now you're gonna work in bed, is it? <laughs> and like started laughing. And so I was like, okay, I mean, it could be a worse reason. He didn't say you're ugly, so yeah. let's and just carry on. Yeah, uh, you're just and he, too little. <laughs> well, he had a hole in the back of his trousers, like right near the bum hole. <laughs> and so while he was dancing, I like poked my finger in. <laughs> revenge uh, yeah well the problem with that is i don't know if you're familiar with gay positions in sex <laughs> there's the mummy and the daddy but if he's like if he's one if he's one and not the other if yeah. he's the daddy he might take very badly to that yeah because you um, took a real gamble there you go uh yeah. also it, the, the, i mean there was cleanliness issues but anyways uh i did it went down well but still didn't work uh Aww. yeah um yeah. And then I tried one of his friends and he, that didn't work either. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. This uh, sounds like a very traumatic night for you. I mean, if I'm going to give you the full story, I'll be very succinct. The next bit, I tried to chat with his friend. He was wearing a hat. I took his hat off and wore his hat. Mm-hmm. Then when he turned out straight, I wouldn't give it back to him. It was outside in the smoking area. He slapped me in the face. Ooh. It wasn't very hard, so I laughed. And then I knew the security guard who was working there. He's like this big, muscly guy who loves like little, young-looking boys like me. Yeah. He's just like, he's South African. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like pushed him and wouldn't let him back in. So I kept the hat and I went in the club. <laughs> I like that story. There you go. Yeah, you got a straight guy kicked out. Yeah, and I got a straw hat, but yeah. no booty. No booty. Do you still have the hat? Uh, maybe. Mm. I should check, shouldn't I? Maybe. Mm. Mm. Well, on that note. <laughs> it's been great. It's been great. Is there any like self-promotion you want to do? I want to do it again. Yeah, okay. You <laughs> that can was come my on again. Best. Um, yeah, like no. do like a Twitter. Does your agent want you to get more Facebook followers? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I can't do anything. Come of on, that. it's Hollywood. You gotta yeah. hustle. <laughs> do you want me to? I really do. Yeah, no, I do. I have nothing to promote. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm taking class at the moment. <laughs> Come and watch it. Yeah. If you get that role on that NBC show, oh. you should. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know, I got a haircut in between auditions, did I tell you? Oh, yeah. Uh, and then you came in and they were like, oh, that's not ew. what we wanted. Ew. I mean, I'm putting it down to that because I was clearly the best actor. Of course. And they wanted to have sex with you real bad. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. But the haircut. Yeah. 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 They wanted to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is so fun. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was a treat. Bye, Jamie. Au revoir. Thanks for listening to Lizard People. I've been your host, Caitlin Hempstead. And if you're interested in supporting the show, you can subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. Bye. Podcast Network.